Here we have the majority of our electrical connections made. We have our incoming power over here on the right. We also have the CTs connected here, uh, each, all three of the CTs since this is a uh, three-phase circuit. We also have, uh, we have not yet made the connections for the communication as well as the pulsed output. If you're going to be setting this up on a uh, BACnet system or MSTP network, that sort of thing, uh, this is where you will make those connection points. This particular model has the USB adapter. We can use that USB to uh, configure our uh, meter with the newer version of the viewpoint software. Now, something you want to take note of if you are setting up one of the older meters is you will need to pay close attention to these two dials here. These are where you set your addressing for the network if you're going to be adding this onto a network. And if you are using an older meter and you need to get into the configuration, you will need to switch both of these to zero and zero. Uh, or you can actually enter the particular address depending on the particular version of the viewpoint software you're using to gain access to the parameters of the power meter. Alright guys, the first step in setting up this meter is to install the viewpoint software. You can either download this from the Dent Instruments website or when you purchase your meter it should come with a disc and it is just basically a standard Windows installation uh, just following all through the prompts and it will install all the components necessary to communicate with your uh, dent power meter. Now we have the viewpoint software installed on our laptop. I'm simply going to open the window. This is the first screen that you will come to and this is where we will establish our communications with the meter. We are currently connected using the USB cable. In this drop down field here you will notice the it comes defaulted for uh, it could come defaulted as a COM port or one of the others if you try to connect using one of those you will get an error unless that is how you're connecting through one of those COM ports but for this device we are connecting using the USB so we have that selected and once we press the connect button down at the bottom of the screen it will populate these three fields here with the uh, model number and serial number as well as the firmware version for your meter the next step is to open the meter setup tab go down towards the bottom of the screen and press retrieve meter setup it will pull all of the data from the meter it is in this screen here that you will select and configure the CTs for this particular meter we are using the roll coil CTs and all of this is pre-configured for us uh, if you're using one of the other type of CTs you will need to select that option and then enter the uh, ratio of CTs and that sort of thing all the information there depending on the load that you are using uh, the service this particular service is a 400 amp service and you will select that option here there is a scaler that you can find in the manual for the various uh, service powers you know the services that uh, you would connect to and you will enter that value here uh, you know that you will select that here once you have that information configured you will press the send setup to meter and it will send all of that information to the meter itself if you're going to be adding the device to a network underneath the com setup this is where you will select whether you're going to be using MSTP or BACnet and that sort of thing and this is where you will configure all of that information something that I wanted to show you on the previous screen is this if you're going to use a pulsed output from your meter this is where you will select that you can select KWH kilovolts there's several options uh, that you will select here and the pulse output on that meter located right here will pulse 
based upon your configuration. Now then, once we have all of the communication and everything set up in our meter, and we have sent those values to the meter, we can go to the real-time values to see how we're doing. And go down to the update option down at the bottom of the screen. When you press the update option, it will pull the meter and it will populate uh, the fields telling you all of the information as far as the usage. And if uh, those steps are followed, you should be able to get your Dent Industries Power Scout meter configured and up and running. The next step is to connect the network and to get all of the points pulled into Metis's extended architecture. One very important point that I need to make is if you're going to add this to a BACnet uh, trunk, then you need to ensure that the baud rate for the meter is identical to the communication on your network. Now to show you how to get that network setting, and let's uh, look at the settings that we are using in Metasys, which is what we're going to be adding this to. So I double click the field bus trunk and then I click the diagnostics tab and here under the diagnostics tab is the speed setting that I need. Active baud rate is right there. That is what I have to ensure that the meter is set for as well. Currently we have got this drop down tab here and I simply select the correct setting and send that to the meter. When you send that value to the meter, it may take it just a few seconds before it uh, transfers that data. But once you do that, you should be ready to connect your network and start pulling the points into the system. Here we have our network connected to the meter and these two dials, this is a hexadecimal address configuration. These two dials is what you will use for setting the address in your meter. Once you have your network connected and your address set, you should be able to start pulling points in. Now remember, if you do not have the baud rate set correctly on the meter, as it is with the rest of your network, you will probably bring down your network. Uh, you know, if you have uh, two devices trying to communicate at different speeds, it's not going to work. So make sure that the baud rate in your meter is set exactly what it is on the rest of your devices. Now that we have our meter connected and all of our settings configured correctly, we're ready to try to add this to our network. So we highlight the particular trunk that we're going to add it to. I'm going to go up to Insert, Field Device, and the great thing about BACnet is the Auto Discover feature. This screen here, of course, gives me a review screen as far as where I'm putting that device, which that is where we're going with it. So I click Next, and here we go with the Auto Discover. That is a great thing about BACnet is it allows us to uh, search for devices on the network. Now, if you get this screen here that tells you that the results are from a previous discovery, press the restart. Since you're adding a device, you do not want it to use past results. You want it to go out and look at that network from the ground up. So we're going to let this run and we're going to see if we can add, if we can find that meter and we will come right back and show you how we add those points as well. Now that the scan is complete, right here is the device which we added. So we're going to highlight that. We are going to give this a name, a unique name for this. Since uh, we are using this to meter a bookstore, we're just going to call this the bookstore meter. Once we have that named, I simply press next. This is a review screen where we can, you know, configure a lot of other options for this particular device. We're not going to do any of that currently. I'm just going to press next, and when I press the finish tab, it will automatically bring me to the window uh, here where if I wanted to add a trend, which we're not going to do that for this device. 
Once I hit done, it gives me the option to add field points, which is something we want to do. We want to go out there and grab all of the points inside that meter. Once again, I'm using the auto discover feature, which is a great thing about the back net. And it will go out to the meter and it will tell the meter to show me everything it has. And from that, I can select the points that I want to pull into our system. It's currently scanning. It'll take just a minute or so, and then we will have the option of the points that we want to pull in. Okay, now it has discovered all of the points for that meter. I'm simply going to press the close button here, and here is where I will select the individual points that I want to add. I simply go down through this list and check the points that I want, which just basically you, all you need to do is double click each of the bubbles outside of the point that you wish to add. You have all of the points checked that you want to add to your system. You simply press next. This is a review screen for the points that you wish to have added to your system that you've selected. So we press finish and it will take it just a few minutes to populate those points within the system. But you should be able to go over to your network and find the device that you added and here that device is let's double click into it and here are the points that we have added to our system anyways that's how you can add the pulse meter to your backnet system and in another video i will show how to set up the logic for uh, the utility profiles Anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. If it is, give it a thumbs up, and be sure to uh, drop me a comment with below with any questions. Thanks for watching.